Without a doubt, Ireland's biggest party happens on St Patrick's Day. Every year on March the 17th, the Irish do what they do so well, celebrate, with parades all over the country. So what's the celebration all about? It started 1,500 years ago when a missionary known as St Patrick brought Christianity to Ireland. The biggest party honouring Ireland's patron saint takes place in the capital, Dublin. There's even an amazing light show. Dublin is a truly exciting city. Let tour guide Tanya Jordan show you some highlights. That's Irish or Gaelic and means 100,000 welcomes to my Dublin. Even though Dublin has 1.2 million inhabitants, it feels like a large village. It's easy to chat with locals. This is typical Dublin pub culture here. Everybody sitting outside, enjoying themselves, having the crack, as we call it in Irish. Slauncher. Slauncher. can't come to Dublin without visiting the home of Guinness. You can even smell it in the air here. It's the smell of home for any Dubliner. Let's go in. The Guinness storehouse was part of the famous brewery since 1759. Now it's a museum. You can see and taste 250 years of beer history. This is what a Dublin would call mother's milk. I'm in the queue for the long room library that must see at Trinity College. Here in the long room library, you'll find books dating back well over a thousand years and some right up to the 19th century. It's a collection of over 250,000 books, all bound in leather, some written on calfskin. We couldn't have a typical day in Dublin without ending it in a typical music pub. Let's go. An Irish pub is much more than just a bar. It's more like a living room. Pubs welcome you with their cosy vibe and friendly decor. Pull up a seat at the bar and become part of the community while you're there. The Irish people, I would say, um, are very relaxed and welcoming and talk with people and, and, and learn where they're from and, have, you know, and, and hear their stories and they'll tell them stories, have a drink or two and, uh, and play some music. Did you know that Ireland has more sheep than inhabitants? They thrive in the Irish landscape. Irish people all over the world take pride in the country's lush greenery. Lonely, wild, and seemingly endless. The most popular of its six national parks, Killarney is also the oldest. There's also Burren National Park with its mystical dolmens, which are prehistoric tombs. Don't miss the spectacular Killary Fjord, the only one in the country. Ireland has over 3,000 kilometers of coastline. Take a drive on the wild Atlantic Way, the country's spectacular coastal route. Don't miss a stop at the beach at Bundoran. The waves can reach impressive heights. That's why Bundoran is one of the best surfing spots in Ireland. If you need a break, stop in one of Ireland's charming towns, like Galway. The coastal town is famous for its seafood. Feast your eyes on the incredible force of the mighty Atlantic Ocean. Not only are the Cliffs of Moher incredibly Instagrammable, they're also a must-see on any island sightseeing bucket list. The rugged mystical landscape has also inspired film directors. Welcome to Westeros, the land of Game of Thrones. In reality, it's Northern Ireland. Large parts of the internationally acclaimed TV series were shot here. 
Well, one of the main reasons that, uh, that HBO and Game of Thrones came to Northern Ireland was the wealth of our scenery. Every one of our six counties has a, a slightly different look to it. It has a different geology, it has a different landscape. And I think in the, the 10 years or so that Game of Thrones have been here, they visited almost every one of the, the locations that we have in Northern Ireland. Here, fans can visit the original scenes of the action, like the 12th century Inch Abbey south of Belfast. But if they wish, they can even become Knights of Westeros for a brief moment. A number of Northern Ireland's many castles and ruins served as settings for the series, such as the Tower House of 15th century Audley's Castle. It's where the character Rob first meets his love, Talisa, in season two. Farther inland, you'll find the Dark Hedges Avenue of Beech Trees. The avenue appeared as the King's Road in season two. Although it was only used in one scene in the series, it was still long enough to make it a popular tourist destination. The Headland of Fairhead became famous too, known in the series as Dragonstone. It's time to follow the magnificent shoreline of Merlot Bay. In an hour and a half's drive, you're in another world, Belfast. It's the capital of Northern Ireland and was the site of violent conflicts for decades. Here, you meet up with local Chrissy Greenaway. She shows you her favorite places in town. So when you come to Belfast, you'll always be reminded of our troubled past. Uh, beside me is one of the last remaining peace lines, peace lines that we once had all across Northern Ireland. It used to separate the Protestant from the Catholic community, but nowadays it's really become a, a remnant and a symbol of what used to be. As you can see, we have a lot of artwork now, and um, yeah, the Arts Council has organised projects for both the communities where they come together and just participate in uh, mutual projects. So you can see people love to sign the wall and leave their messages and well wishes, not just for Northern Ireland, but also for peace all around the world. The Titanic Quarter is a must see. Belfast is where the famous Titanic ship was built before it hit an iceberg and sank in 1912. The story is told here in the renovated shipyard. All right, so we're looking at the first class and it's the first time that we had a sort of a luxurious hotel on board of a ship. There's also another lively Irish tradition you can't miss when you're here. Can you guess which? Well, you can't come to Belfast without experiencing a trance session in one of our many traditional music bars, so let's head in. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, please click here. And don't forget to subscribe at DW Travel.